Today we're gonna take that photo and change it to become like this. Hey there, my name is Ali. You can find all my work on Instagram at the screen in front of you. And today we're gonna make that floating lady. First, we'll drag our first photo. All the photos are available in the description. You can download them and follow along with us. Okay, now what I want to do, I don't want it to be so landscape because I upload most of my files on Instagram. So Instagram supports the portrait more than the landscape. So I'm going to make it something like that. Okay, then I'm going to drag my second photo. Okay, to cut this, I'll use the pen tool. And I'll just keep pressing clicks to create like anchor points. And if it comes to a place where it's curved, I'll just hold click and pull. So it creates a sort of a, some sort of a tangent. And then I'll press alt and press click on the point itself to remove the other tangent. So I can go again in a straight line. I'll keep doing this until I finish it. Now I'm gonna speed this forward to like reduce the time of the video. Okay, now since we're done with this, I'm gonna resize it. Put it in the place where I want. I wanna make sure it's exactly in the middle. Maybe something like that, a little bit smaller maybe. Okay, that's good. Now we need to adjust its color to match the background. So I'm gonna go to adjustment layer, add hue and saturation layer, link it to it. And then I'm gonna just reduce the opacity a little bit because it's too yellowish. Then I'll go to the red channel and reduce the opacity and maybe even move it somewhere to the blue. It's here. Uh, that's green. I need to make it like somehow blue. Yeah, something like that. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity. Well, no, it's not like working. I'll leave it like that. And then I'm gonna go to a curves adjustment and I'll go to the blue channel and I'll just add a little bit of blue and go to the red channel and add some cyan and maybe go to the green channel and like reduce the greens by adding a bit of magenta. Okay, it still has like some strong yellows in it. So I'm gonna go again to the hue and saturation, go to the yellow channel and just reduce the yellows a little bit the saturation of the yellows okay now it's good it just need this part is a little too bright so i'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer make sure it's linked and just maybe re bring the highlights down a little bit and bring up the shadows bring down the highlights okay now it's looking good okay what i want to do now i don't like the mountain behind it's like doesn't make it look like it's framing good so i'm gonna go to the first layer i'm gonna add a new layer and then use a brush then i'll sample a color from here a bright color maybe reduce the opacity a little bit and make sure it's soft brush and i'll just paint some fog here and there just to make the mountains like fade a little bit Yeah, now our like object is, I'll reduce the opacity, it's a lot clearer. Look at this. Look at this. Now it's very clear because what's behind it is very bright and it's a little bit dark. Okay, now we're gonna add our, I'll group this together. I'll call it the post. Okay, then we need to add our model. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna drag our model to the canvas. And then I'm gonna use the pen tool. And again, I'll keep 
going around it till it's completely like cut. I'm gonna skip that part. Okay, now we're done with the model with cutting her. After I finished the selection, I made a layer mask so that only the model is there. Okay, now what I want to do is her legs looks like her skin tone is so red. So I need to fix that by doing a hue and saturation layer. Link it below. Go to the red channel and just reduce the reds a little bit. You see what it does? I'll just reduce it a little bit. Okay. Then I'm gonna go to the curves adjustment layers, add a curves adjustment, maybe bring the highlights a little bit down and bring the shadows a little bit up. And I'll go to the red channel, decrease the red, this will add cyan because cyan is opposite to red, and then add a little bit of blue. So what this did is, added a little bit of blue so she looks faded just like the environment behind her. Okay, she's a bit large compared to the post so I'm gonna take my post layer press ctrl and t and make the post a little bit larger yeah something like that is, is better okay and then I need to draw the rope now which is like wrapping around her so how I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go to my brush tool I'll change it to pencil I'll make sure it's 100 opacity and it's on 2 pixels Okay, then I'm gonna create a new layer, call it the rope. Then I'm gonna take my, make the color maybe something like dark gray. Take my pen tool and I'm gonna draw something like that. Now I'm gonna, I want this to be my rope. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press right click and go to stroke path. Then I'll tell him to stroke it with the pencil. So it will draw with the pencil. Now I'm going to press backspace or delete two times to delete the pen uh, thingy. And then I'm going to put the rope behind the model. Or no, I'll leave it above the model. And I'm going to use my eraser tool. And I will erase that part. So that the rope looks like it's coming and holding her from like down. But the problem is, 2 pixels I guess were too low, this looks very like narrow, so I'm gonna hold ALT and press right on my keyboard. This will make a duplicate of the rope to the right, then I'm gonna hold both of them, press CTRL E, this will merge them together, I'll hold ALT again and press right again, it will make another copy, then I'll hold them, CTRL and E. Now we have our rope, and our model, okay. Now what I'm gonna do, I wanna create a reflection for them. So. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna group those first, call this model and rope. And then on the model and rope and post, I wanna make a reflection for them. So I'm gonna hold control and press J. This will duplicate them. Then I'm gonna hold control again and press E. This will merge them on a separate layer. Now I can press control and T, then press right click and flip vertical. This will flip it vertical. I'll hold shift while moving it so it goes in a straight line and I'll just put it like that and press enter. Okay, now if we look at our upper side and lower side, I can do something like that. Maybe to check. If you see what happens between the water and the reflection, the water, the above part, sorry, and the reflection on water, the above part here is a little bit bluish the low part is a little bit into the cyan so this one i'm gonna press ctrl and u and this is the blue the left of the blue is the cyan so i'm gonna move it a little bit to the left so it's more cyanish okay then i'm gonna press okay then i'm gonna press ctrl and m this will open the curves adjustment i'm gonna make it a little bit darker i'll try putting it on hard light I don't know if that, that, that worked actually, and maybe reduce the opacity a little bit. Now we have our water reflection. 
But then I want to do one thing. Should have done it earlier actually, but I do it. I'll do it now. It's okay. I'm gonna go to my model, and I want to change the color of her dress. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my magic wand, and select her dress. Then I'll make sure I'm not selecting like the hair or anything. So I'll remove that part from my selection. And remove of course the arms as well. Okay, now we're only like on the dress. I'm gonna add a hue and saturation layer. No, not curves. Okay, so I don't lose the selection. Look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add a hue and saturation layer. I want that selection. So I'm gonna hold alt and bring that selection to the hue and saturation. He will ask me replace mask. I'll tell him yes. So now on, I have the same mask on a curves and on a hue and saturation. So in the curves, I'm gonna brighten up a little bit the dress. Maybe brighten it up from the shadows. No, that's too strong. Brighten it from the shadows a little bit and some from here. And then on the hue and saturation, I'm gonna press colorize. It will add color to my dress. I'll increase the saturation. Now it's red. I will use red because red is opposite to like the cyan. It will make her pop up a little bit. I'll try increasing the lightness a little bit maybe. So the red looks more visible. And maybe bring the curves a little bit higher. Okay, that's good actually. Then I'm gonna zoom out. Okay, these two layers, if I have done that before, I wouldn't need to change it below, but I didn't, so I'll have to change it again below. I'm gonna hold Alt on these two layers and pull them up. Then I'm gonna press Ctrl T and then right click, flip vertical. And then I'm just gonna move it until it match the one below. But of course it looks too bright, so I'm gonna just reduce the opacity. Maybe of the curves and the hue and saturation. Okay, now that's good. We have our reflection. We have everything. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two brightness and contrast layers to create my vignette. On the first one, I'm gonna add something like 40 brightness. And then the second one, I'll do a negative 40 brightness. On the one below, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring my gradient tool, make sure it's in the circle, and just paint black. This will remove the darkness I just made. So it will brighten up the middle part a little bit. And on this one, I'm gonna even add some contrast, but I'm gonna press Ctrl and I. This will erase the mask completely. Then I'm gonna take white color and start painting with white from the middle with my gradient tool. Just add. So look what these two did. They added some sort of a vignette to the middle of my photo. But my photo is a little bit dark, I guess. So I'm gonna just go to a curves adjustment. And maybe overall add some brightness. I want it to be bright like it's a foggy morning day maybe. So a little bit of brightness. Then I'm gonna do like some adjustment here. I'm gonna bring the shadows up. I always like to do this. It adds a lot of interest to the photo. Bring the blacks up and then pull somewhere in the midpoints a little bit down. And then make the highlights brighter. I like this adjustment a lot. You see what it does? It like fades your photo and makes your highlights pop out even more. And then I'm gonna press Ctrl Alt Shift E. This will merge everything I have into a new separate layer. So I can go to filter, camera raw filter. And then I'll just do my final touches. I'll reduce the clarity. It will make it a little bit more soft, dreamy look. Maybe I'll see what the vibrance does. It's like too strong. Of course, I don't want that. A little bit of vibrance to add some color to it. Maybe I'll try the yellow and the blue. I don't know. I don't like the yellow nor the blue. I'll make a little bit brighter. Then I'll do some contrast. Then I'm going to go to my FX module. I'm going to dehaze the photo a little bit. So it looks like remove a little bit of the fog. Make it more clear. And add some vignette additional vignette then i'll go to the camera calibration i'll see what like different colors does i'll try to go for more cyan this is too cyan but i like it actually but it's too strong so i'm gonna just go somewhere in the middle and maybe reduce the, the saturation a little bit okay that's good i'll press okay okay now if we look closer you see this is the after this is the before after before after it's just a matter of taste what color you like more or which one will like serve your purpose even more.
Okay, that's it for today's tutorial. If you enjoy my tutorial, guys, make sure you subscribe for more amazing content. And if you have any questions or any suggestions, make sure you link them below in the description in the comment section. And I'll make sure I'll reply you as soon as I see it. Thank you, guys.